Hi, my name is Jamie Church. Uh, today we're going to be talking about an example of a transcription essay with up elements. Uh, this video was made for MCDB 427 Molecular Biology at the University of Michigan. Enjoy! Let's start with a general reminder about RNA polymerase and gene transcription in prokaryotes. Now remember that RNA polymerase is made up of several subunits, with the core protein being made up of the beta prime, the beta, and the alpha subunits. So depicted here in blue in the little diagram is the sigma subunit. It has the capacity to bind to DNA by itself, but it does so very poorly. When it is bound to the core protein, the entire complex has improved the binding capacity. And remember, the more we can improve the binding, the more transcription will occur. When it comes to gene transcription in prokaryotes, remember there's the negative 10 and negative 35 sites upstream of the plus 1 site, or the open reading frame. Now, RNA polymerase is going to come in and it's going to bind to these sites, and then transcription will occur. So what is an up element? Well, we're still going to have the negative 10 and negative 35 sites upstream of the plus 1. But we're also going to have this AT-rich region between the negative 40 and the negative 60 sites. That is the up element. Now, the up element, it interacts with the alpha subunit of RNA polymerase. Now, the alpha subunit of RNA polymerase is really subunits with an N-terminal domain and a C-terminal domain. It's the C-terminal domain that interacts with the up element. Now, normally, upstream of the plus 1, we have the negative 10 and negative 35 regions. But with an up element, there's a third place for RNA polymerase to bind. Having three binding sites over two increases the likelihood that RNA polymerase would bind and transcription would occur. Math. So now we know what an up element is, and we know it interacts with the C-terminal domain of the alpha subunit of RNA polymerase. But this had to be discovered by someone, so let's talk about the experiment for how they got this information. The experiment. Really, it's an in vitro essay. The first thing they did is they had a vector, or a plasmid if you prefer, and they would insert a promoter with or without an up element and see how transcription varied. So this is the experimental setup. There's three things they're testing. You can see that they all have this hairpin loop structure at the end. This is a strong terminator. This makes sure that all transcription ends at the same point. So these three lines represent three different in vitro essays. The top one, marked 88, has the promoter and the up element. In the second in vitro essay, what they did is they removed all the DNA information from the negative 40 site to the negative 88 site, removing the up element. The third thing they did is they removed all the information again from the negative 41 site to the 88 site, but this time they subbed in random bases. So in all three cases, RNA polymerase would be added with the appropriate nucleotides so that RNA transcription could occur. Um, this transcript was collected and they ran it in a gel. For their experiment, they did everything in biological duplicates. So the promoter they chose to insert into the vector was the RRNB promoter. This naturally has an up element, making it a prime choice. Let's just quickly orient ourselves with gels again. Now remember, the smaller the item, in this case RNA, the faster it will travel through the gel, so the further down the gel it will be. Controls. Every experiment has them. These are the controls for this experiment. First, the vector. What this lane is showing you is the plasmid without any promoters being inserted. And we can see that transcription is occurring based on these bands here. This makes sense because we know at a minimum every plasmid must at least have an origin of replication and a selectable marker. The second is the LACB5 promoter. What these lanes are showing you is what happens when we insert a promoter into the vector. We can see that it does not disrupt the function of the original transcripts. We can also get transcription by that promoter. See this box here. So now for the experiment, what we want to compare and contrast are these bands right here. These bands were created by the RRNB promoter. So looking at the 88 lane, that's with the up element and the promoter, we get these nice dark bands showing that a lot of transcription occurred. Now we compare those to the bands from the 41 or the sub, they're much lighter in comparison, revealing that less transcription is occurring. The difference between both of those compared to the 88 is that they don't have the up element. Now in all three lanes, we still have the negative 10 and negative 35 regions for RNA primers to bind. That's why there's transcription in all three lanes. But in the negative 88 lane, we also have the up element. That's a third binding site for RNA polymerase. 
The more binding sites increases the likelihood that RNA polymerase is going to bind and more transcription is going to occur. So there's one more kind of cool thing I want to point out about this gel. Look at these bands here and these bands. Look at lane 88 with the up element. You see how the band intensity in these lanes is weaker? Well, this makes sense. There's only so much RNA polymerase available. And with the up element for lane 88, RNA polymerase is going to disproportionately bind to that versus the other promoters in the vector. Cool. So at this point, they know that the up element will increase transcription, but they don't yet know what part of the RNA polymerase is interacting with the up element. That leads us to the second experiment. The next second experiment, they kind of set up the exact same way as the first experiment, except when they add RNA polymerase, this time they have removed the C-terminal domain. Since this experiment was set up in pretty much the exact same way as the first one, let's just focus in on the experimental bands, knowing the controls will be the exact same as the previous figure. So it's easy to see that the band intensities are all very similar. What this experiment was showing us is that when we remove the C-terminal domain of alpha, even if an up element is present, the transcription levels are going to be equivalent to as if the up element wasn't present. There's just one more thing I want to bring your attention to about this experiment. It's going to really help if I have both gels side by side. Now the one on the left is the one where we have the C-terminal domain, and the one on the right is where we removed it. Otherwise, the experiments are the exact same. Is there anything kind of glaring at you as weird? Yes, exactly. All of this RNA transcript just disappears from the second gel. That would lead us to the conclusion that the C-terminal domain is important for that promoter, and when we remove it, transcription just won't occur. So this is a pretty cool experiment, but it does have some limitations. Remember, this is a transcription essay. It can't actually say that the C terminal domain of alpha is binding to the up element. What we can say is, when we have an up element and when we have the C terminal domain of alpha, we see increased levels of transcription. So thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you get a better understanding of how transcription essays work, how you can read gels of transcription essays, and how the up element interacts with the C terminal domain of alpha. As always, go blue.